Hello and welcome to COP4708. We talked about Excel sheet and how to use Excel to manipulate the data, uh, to arrange the data and we had a session about uh, Excel, not in details, there are lots of things that can be done within Excel, but at least we started with uh, getting the idea of databases and how the data being listed uh, in Excel. Um, in this session we are going to address the Axis, which is the next step of Excel. Uh, this is more of a database management system, maybe the simplest database management system uh, that can be used. Uh, and it's been used actually by high percentage of small businesses to manipulate databases. So in this session, we'll go over creating a database using this uh, interface or this software application, which is Microsoft access to do that let's start the software by clicking on start all programs microsoft office and select microsoft access uh, whatever uh, the version that you have 2003 2007 or 2010 in this case I'm, i will work with 2010. you should be able to see the following screen that i have over here If you don't have Microsoft Access, you can download it for free from uh, www.dreamspark.com. Dreamspark uh, you can register for uh, the site with Michelle Belfour. Her email is belfourm at detonestate.edu. To be able to access and download the software, you will get a notice from uh, the website. Uh, you will get a link for Daytona State uh, DreamSpark uh, area and you can download the uh, available software for your uh, work or for your uh, class. Now let's start the uh, access database that we have. Once you open the application you will see the screen where you can click on the blank database and on the right hand side over here you can rename it to employee database slash three or dash three and then click on create we already created a table that's called uh, table one and the database is open here we can add the columns or the information that we need now how can we do that to do any manipulation for the database we can click on the design view over here once you click on the design the system will ask you to save the table here with a certain name so let's click on that one and name this table the employee table and say OK. As you can see in the design view you have the ability to add the columns as you go in these fields so we are going to start naming these fields which is and those are the fields that uh, are considered attributes for the employee entity so in this case we are dealing with an entity called employee we created the table table that represents that uh, entity and now we are adding the fields or columns for that entity which are called also attributes the first one id which is an uh, auto number we are going to change it to employee id then for the second one will do first name last name email as you can see here it's popping up as text and we can select actually from the list the data type that, that we would like to use so in case we are using numbers you can select number 
if we are dealing with date and time you can select date and time if we are dealing with money you can select currency and all the other options that you can see here so you can select any type of data based on that field let's continue adding the information and we'll go with street address then we'll go with city state zip code phone number and then I will add something called department ID and I will use it as number in this case the other thing that you know you will notice that I used for phone number although it's a number I'm using a text the reason I'm using a text because I will be formatting it in a way that I can add brackets dashes whatever I need to do that we go to the input mask down here click on these dots on the side save the table then select the phone number as you can see here we can format the uh, these fields the way that we, we want in this case phone number and we will format it this way then next and this is how it's gonna look like then finish so now it's formatted as a phone number the same for the zip code we can click on the input mask save the table then select zip code and next actually for the zip code we can select just the first five and there is no need for the rest and then finish so now the zip code is formatted although it's text it's formatted to be a zip code if you have more than five numbers it will reject that for the phone number it has to be formatted in a certain way if you do if you do it differently it will reject that and those are some of the constraints that we added to make sure that no one will enter uh, incorrect data so th those are some of the things that actually a database management system will help in when you are dealing with uh, these things it will give you a certain format that will uh, assist you in uh, data entry when it's been done by uh, someone that doesn't know or has limited information about the data once we are done with creating the fields we can save the table then go to the view uh, uh, display and it will display for us the table called employee uh, once I start adding the names it will uh, automate the number so I can uh, do um, John Smith and email can add the email the address the city and I'm just trying to fill the information here just to give you an example on how would that work now for the zip code remember that we did add certain format so what I'm going to do I'm going to exceed that format and you will see that there is an error message that will say that you are not allowed to do that 
so it stopped and it's not giving me any option on adding anything else so if it's five that's it it's five it will not let you add any other numbers no other numbers that's the zip code okay so we'll do and you can see it did accept it for the phone number also it's giving you the format that it, it should be so we can write the format of the phone and for the department ID we'll put department ID number one and this is just like I said this is just an example on entering the data uh, from this actually I would like to address the functional dependencies so what we did actually we identified the employee as an entity in this system this is the entity that I will be tracking the attributes are the first name last name email street uh, street address city state zip code phone number and the department that they work in from this I can develop or identify the functional dependencies when we say functional dependencies mean we are looking at the determinant or the identifier that will identify that uh, table or that will open for me the information for that table means one field that will determine other fields one identifier that, that will identify other attributes in this case we can see from the table that the employee ID just by typing the employee ID that will give me first name last name email street address city state zip code and phone number the same as when I use your student ID so actually your student ID provide us with th some information about you such as your name your email and your address at the same time I can take parts of those fields or those attributes and see if they can determine something for example if I have your email I might have your first name last name maybe other information but what's obvious here that your email can determine your first name and last name this is how you register actually for the email at least we need your name and if you have a phone number then I will have your first name last name and your address because when you register for a phone actually you are you are giving them all these information and for the zip code if you give me a zip code like 32117 I will not be able to determine the name of that person that that's living there because um, I don't have only one person living in 32117 zip code I have thousands maybe more living in that zip code so actually all what the, what the zip code can determine for me is the city and the state and that's how we create our functional dependencies so remember that functional dependencies all what it means is that fields can determine other fields one field or two fields that can determine other fields when we say two fields mean we can combine both so it will be either a single determinant or a composite determinant composite that can uh, be from one or two or more than two actually uh, fields